الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحب ہی و سلم اما بیر حبت فلاح It's important for ourselves and our youth to learn how to manage their anger. All of us need to learn how to manage our anger. How we relate to others. Perhaps we're in a bad mood. Perhaps <clears throat> some event has happened to us. Perhaps something, a travesty, a trial, a tribulation has befallen us. And we have to know how to deal with those issues. So as they say, anger management is something we have to learn. And the lack of anger management can be a reason for taking someone's life. There are those that we know who have taken the lives of others just out of anger. And I'm not saying their anger wasn't perhaps justified but was taking the life of another person justified. And then what are the repercussions of that? It's anger due to the feeling of being disrespected or someone from amongst you being disrespected that caused people to kill one another. Shoot people, shooting one, uh, people in the head. As was the case with a security guard who asked someone to wear the mask, which is the protocol of the establishment. The woman felt disrespected. She cursed, she was angry, she fought, she told her husband, the husband and the son, the son shot the man dead in the back of the head. The security guard, his family of ch and his young children, his young children in a loss, his life is gone. The young man who shot the security guard, his life is gone, he's now in jail, in prison. Likewise, his father and his mother, because they were the one who instigated it, and they all were in collusion in taking the life of this man, and it was based upon ignorance and anger. The reason I'm bringing this up, Ahabit Tefillah, because many of our youth suffer from this. Facebook discussions, creating anger, thinking it's about respect, disrespecting someone because they're keyboard warriors. And that ends in people's lives being taken. People being dishonored and people destroying one another over stupidity and ignorance. And the emotion that comes from this is anger. So anger and not knowing how to deal with anger, not how, knowing how to deal with one another is a reason for your own destruction. That's a destruction in this life as well as the next. An Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Anna rajala qala lin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam Usini qala la taghdab faraddada mirarin qala la taghdab Ruahu Bukhari. In this hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it gives us the prophetic medicine from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be followers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Usini, advise me. Can you imagine going to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam asking for that advice? And that's why we see from the signs of the religion and the signs of goodness is that a person seeks Islamic knowledge and they seek Islamic advice on how to deal with problems in their lives. So this is khair azim. And this is why the Talabat al-Ilm and the scholars need to offer themselves up when people have advice. Try to be open. 
We all fall short, but try your best to give advice to the people if you have something to offer them. So this man, he came to Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Usini, give me advice, advise me. Tell me, what, what should I do? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just looking at the man. Looking at his, his, condition, his condition. He said, La taghbab, don't become angry. Faraddada mirarin. So the man, he also repeated this many times because he's like, hey, that's short. I need more. I need to know something more. You know, so Usini. La taghbab, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't become angry. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahabat fillah, Imam Anawawi mentions about this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is that the point of this hadith is to show that the Muslim should not act based upon his anger. And no doubt from our natural inclinations is we become angry about things, things that happen to us. But what is the point not to act upon your anger? When you become angry, for example, how many divorces happen because of anger? In the fit of anger, especially with the youth. Because they have less tools to know how to deal with these things and less experience. So it's easy. How many people regret and they've divorced their wife 27 times probably? And they're still together. They're probably together unlawfully. And this is due to anger. To being quick in saying things that you will surely regret. So... From justice and from helm is to be patient and even in a fit of anger to walk away, to sit down, to take time out so that way you don't act based upon that anger. You don't do something foolish that you're going to regret and maybe it could cost you your life, it could cost you your marriage, it could cost you your family. It could cause harm to the whole community because of your anger. La taghdab. We also see from this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is that to be patient is from strength. Because in another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said the strong one is not he who throws someone down. The strong one is only he who controls himself when he is angry. And this is also a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. So a habatifillah, control your anger. Seek religious counsel and advice in dealing with man anger management issues. In dealing with Issues in your lives. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al kareem Fas'al ahli dhikri. In kuntum ta'lam, in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. If you don't know, unlike ahl al-batil and falsehood and bid'ah and zandaqa wa ilhad, they tell you that everybody, the ijtihad is open for everybody. This is what you find from a lot of LGBTQ supposed Muslims and secularists and modernists from amongst our communities. They are not modern. They are bid'a. They are mubtedi'a with a capital meme as I said prior to this. It's a sickness. When you distort Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion, accept the fact that you're in sin and hide your sin. Don't think you're proud and you're loud in sin, waving the flag of sin. And then making fatwa based on kufr, based on, based on jahil and ignorance, which can lead to kufr. It can lead to kufr because you can end up saying what is halal and what is haram based on no knowledge, based on lying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So it's very important, Ahabat Tefillah, for us to gain Ilm and Nafia. And for us to learn how to control ourselves and control our tempers, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was surely for myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.